Oh, you should have thought of that before you went and got the Palantir. Get off me. Hey guys, it's your girl Ayesha aka GeekXXChic and we are back with another reaction to The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. We are now on season two, episode six, which is called, Where Is He? So last episode, we had the rings go to the dwarves and we started to see the negative effects that the ring was already having on Durin. We see that both Disa and Durin did their best to try to convince him to part with the ring, but at that point it was already over and Durin has taken back his princely power thus far. And basically so far he just promised Disa that he would never don a ring. But as I said, we'll have to see whether or not that promise is when he feels he can keep. And then we also have back in Aregion, Aregion, sorry, we have Sauron and Aram Celebrimbor now working on the rings for men because uh, basically Sauron ran rings around Celebrimbor mentally into basically making him think that he had to make those rings. So it's a race against time to try to get to Aregion for the elves, but it's not looking so good. And I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, I think that was pretty much it. So. Yeah, very anxious to get into this episode, so let's jump right in. But just before I do, if you'd like to be in the know of when I drop these episodes, please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you can be in the know. All right, that out of the way, guys. Let's get into the episode right now. You better run! Look at that core, nice and straight. I don't care what they call us. Anything's better than dying out, and I'll take the ghost. Orcs thinking for themselves? Impossible. Not you getting outsmarted by an orc, bro. Damn. Maybe you needed to question them. Never mind, it was hot. Do it again. <laughs> A map? A note? A love letter. Why is Aaron Deere on his own? I guess it makes sense. The humans really can't help him. Pride is woven in your inmost self. That you resist my hand. Okay, Mithril's only hard to get. More Mithril. There is no more Mithril. Right? Like, that stuff's hard to mine. All our dispatches go unanswered. Must I do everything myself? We are laboring as hard as we can. The back talk. Now that she thinks you're the devil. Especially ill-tempered. Of late, my lord. How dare you talk about my temper, you... What is your name again, Smith? Damn. When's the last time you slept or ate, bro? Oh, Mirdania. She's called Mirdania. It doesn't matter, truthfully. If it matters, you'd have remembered. Earlier, I, I could have sworn I left my creasing hammer just here. And, and... You mean that hammer? What are you doing, Sauron? Or is this actually just exhaustion? I'm just a cheat. Then I am afraid you will not like the tidings I bring. <sighs> Your people demand an audience. Your people? Are we not our people? Aren't we all supposed to be elves here? And we wonder why the rings of men went so bad. Dear elves, I don't care. Signed, Sauron. Was it that business about him forgetting my name? I, I God, I you are him, so but... self-centered, sis. He didn't even remember you. To you. To make sure the others respect his wishes as well. Can I trust you to follow your crotch rather than your mind? Mm. That's what I thought. Simpleton. Move on. My lord, the carving. On the body. Don't ask me questions. What did it say? Hmm, what did it say? Where is he? Episode title. I'm surprised he told the truth. But again, he does like to play with people. This actor is so good at doing those subtle smirks. Just enough to make you want to punch him right in the throat. The way one always is. Once he has wormed his way inside your mind. You know nothing on my mind. I think he does, though. Fortunately. For a while, he even makes you believe that his power has become yours. Sound familiar? It makes every desire's fulfillment seem inevitable. An ocean of color. Oh, she looked away. He's telling the truth. Do you want to know what he offered me? Not really, but you're going to tell me anyway. Exactly. It is not his lies which must be extinguished. It is him. 
Facts. And I can help you do it. Hmm. You tried to kill him once. That didn't go so well. I was there when he kneeled to be crowned. And I was the one who used its power to slay him. But you didn't, though. Halbrand is Sauron. It came to that conclusion? She's like, I found that out three months ago. I suggest you find the will to do so. If you can. Not at our spitting bars. We will speak again. I thought I wasn't a prisoner. Interesting. I don't blame him though. That look she got in her eye when she took a look at that crown, she was definitely thinking of stabbing him with it. So <laughs> it's probably best he locked her up. The crime of high treason. Sure, sure. Taken in sub, these hideous breaches of law warrant a sentence of So death. we're gonna see him running away from the city, right? You proud of yourself now, sis? This is what you wanted? Hope you're happy. He renounces his crimes and pledges his loyalty to Numenor's true ruler. I'd rather die. Elendil, son of Amandil, do you renounce your crimes? This framework, this absolute frame job. Ned Stark it. I do. He's gonna leave. And do you accept our Farazon as Numenor's true king? I do not. He spoke the truth. Ned Stark it. And the only traitor here is you. That's what conviction looks like. I know you've never seen it before. Now what are we to do with him? Shut up! You have done quite enough, boy. Right? Useless sack of... The hell? Sorry. Is it sure things that will be? All things that only might That is a very good question. Every trial that you've met thus far, you have failed. Spectacularly. Failed a trial before you now. And there will not be another. Oh, damn. Okay. That kind of trial. <gasps> it was a tat! Follow old Tom. But he will show you. Okay. Why don't you just leave? Get clear of him. Run away. And go where? Exactly would we go? Yeah. I married my brand girl in its shadow. Get it. There's memories, but... Okay. Last spring. When he passed... Let me guess you buried him under it. I buried him under it. Mm. You see this place? It's not just where we live. It's home. It's our home. Mm. Turn myself in now. There's a chance I can get Poppy out too. <laughs> I think Poppy just found her husband though. It took me a long time to settle on a name. Well, how long? One or two years. Oh, that's not so long. Oh, one or two years ago. Oh, wow. What would all of us maybe about be murdered, no? If you want to <laughs> Quit talking. I mean, I think it's a pretty good prerequisite. Wow. She's like, I'm already there. Please don't say something dumb. <laughs> not Hobbit love. She moves fast. They've only been there for like two days. I think Poppy's staying. You don't have to worry about it, Nori. She's found a new home. How many times you told me he's important? A few more in a rabbit's dozen, I suppose. <laughs> I say we fight for it. We? You got a man now. I mean, he's nobody, but still, he's somebody to you. And now the time has come for you to find yours. Yes, and maybe not disintegrate it this time. Just a suggestion. Which one is it? Um, figure it out. One could spend months searching out there. Well, have fun then. Unless I find her soon, she will die. Both of them will die. Many that die deserve life. Some that live Facts. deserve death. Woo! Bars. Who are you to give it to them? Mm. Gandalf said the same thing. There are times when one path becomes two, and you must choose. Mm. More bars. A dark wizard in the east. Every soul in Middle Earth is in peril. Would you abandon them to their doom? For one hobbit? Your friend or your destiny? Why can't I have both? You can go with this or you can go with that. I don't envy you, my friend. That's not easy. Oh. Wizard! 
wizard tings. Demon. Just kidding. I love Tom. But I don't blame him. He's like, this place is kind of creepy. I'm leaving. <laughs> you can do it, wizard. All right. See ya, Durin is hoarding all his mithril, but he's now going to want to sell to the elves at three times the price. Greed, greed, greed. And what are you even going to do with all that gold? Where are you going to spend it? You never leave the mountain. Well, perhaps Khazad Dun would prefer something more precious. Go on, I'm greedy. There's nothing to discuss. Mm-hmm. I've already decided. So why am I here? The answer is no. Oh! Greedy. Not for the reason you think, Durin. Farewell. Yeah. Kiss my ass. Someone trip him. Sauron's like, okay. That was a smirk, though, so he wanted that answer. Or something's working his way. For a moment... I was afraid you'd take and leave You're speaking your too senses. soon, Darren. You're speaking too soon. They'll be back. Back. Mm hmm. With a better offer. It bears the weapons and armor of Mithro is all but invincible. We can name our price. Tell ya. Take off the ring. I will not. It is mine. Belongs You're precious? To you belong to it. I am nothing. To prove to you, boy. AKA, I'm the ring's little bitch. Then he's left us no choice. We be behead him tonight. If he's so enthralled to that ring, he'd turn his troops on his own son. It'll show every dwarf in Khazad Doom he's no longer fit to rule. They'll take his crown. This is not playing. But the dwarf on that throne is not your father. Here we are. Listen to your wife. I can't do it, Thesa. I don't have the power. Lost and far away, yes, but he's still in there. So you're just gonna let every dwarf in the mountain die for that? Come on, bro. He'll destroy himself and take this kingdom with him. Disa speaking straight facts, as always. How, when's she been wrong? Okay, maybe on the whole actually going and taking the proposal over at Eregion, but that would have been manipulated to happen anyway. But otherwise, my girl has never been wrong. Listen to your wife, sir. You are to be cast into the sea to face trial by abyss. Thanks, bye. His offer of mercy still stands. If you swear- Swear fealty to him. I'd rather choke on my own bomb, thanks. It is hardly mercy to ask a man to set his integrity aflame. Period, but you know nothing about that because you have no integrity. Bye. I cannot lose you. Oh, you should have thought of that before you went and got the Palantir. Get off me, sir. Your favorite child is back in Middle-earth. Go find him. This one, scrapped. My tongue to the dust for the chance to give to her. Gonna get the queen to plead for you? Numenor is to endure. It needs men like you. Men who will champion all that is precious. Men of faith. How can I be a man of faith if I go against faith. my beliefs? Faith. If it is not Thank it. you! Y'all don't really understand the word, the, the meaning of these words. Were I to do so, I would cease to be the man you wish to save. Thank what you. You're wrong. Then that's my choice. I'd rather die with a heart that is whole than live with one broken by cowardice. Thank you. It is the will of the Valar that my life be spared. Then it will be. Yeah, this is what faith means. The sea is always right. That's what faith looks like. Go, go kneel at the, the, the feet of your new king, since you're so good at being on your knees. Oh, you better whip that cloak. Did you forget she's a sorceress? <laughs> I love it. Y'all keep forgetting. Whenever a woman is calm like that, y'all should be nervous. That's only gonna work for so long though. Mm-hmm. I love you. I knew it, I'm like, you gonna be turned on. <laughs> Kinky. They'll be back. Yeah. Then we'll be ready. Hell yeah! Civil war in the mountain! I don't know. See, I'm petty. I would look at her and say, this is your fault before I jumped in. All your fault. And your brother hates you. I have the right to face the Valar's judgment in his place. Didn't count on that. She's correct. It's all in there. You must. This hope... I hate her so much. By the letter of the law, yes. I want her to meet a grisly end. Up, 
Ellen DeLone dead ass. You cannot stay here. If she ends up getting eaten, you need to leave this corrupt ass kingdom because it will not get better for you. But you look like a badass, Cynthia. If this is your last episode, you rocked it. Don't have any of that Sauron Riz to just make it go away. Zavala have deemed her. Worthy? <laughs> take that. Oh, take that. Even the wave. You see how the wave came up with the queen part? Jar jumping in, Alpharazon, whatever your name is. Jump in. Go for a little dip and see if you can do the same. <laughs> Screw your stupid bird. Sea beast. Sauron? Yep. You are definitely a ring bearer. You look like you probably were the Lord of the Wraiths. You look like that kind of man. And that gives us momentary advantage. Unlock me. She'll play along for now, but she definitely will betray you. <laughs> definitely. Her and Sauron are very similar like that. You and I will eradicate all trace of Sauron from this world. I see a problem no, with that, because Kella Brimbor doesn't want to leave. Any rings that have known his touch must be destroyed. And, and then? What then for the order? Exactly. Will your high king permit us to return home in peace? Afraid not. Gonna have to destroy you all because you're ugly. Did you really think I would attempt to challenge the might of Sauron in a single legion? They've been busy breeding them orcs. Nothing else to do in the dark. This must be what he wants. Yep. Sauron has no army of his own. Exactly. You got so played! You lured yours here instead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you thought you were so smart. This is what Sauron wants! This is what he wants! She's right, and you know she is. Bye, Aregian. It's any consolation. Sauron has been planning this, so there was really no getting around it. Y'all just notice now? Never mind that. You belong in here, my friend. I've had quite enough of you telling me where I belong. Ooh, saucy, but it's too late. You should have had this energy like two months ago. We still have nine rings to forge. With what mithril? Damn, that's a lot of magic. Woo, Sauron. If he wasn't such an evil SOB, I'd be impressed. Hello, little black elf child. Mithril ore, refined to a powder by Narvi himself. It should be enough. How did he steal that? When did he steal it? Huh, damn Sauron. Well, like I said, you really cannot blame this man. He is tenacious. The rings of power. They will be deemed the most precious. Hmm. Interesting choice of words. Precious. Last. One last time, for real though. So literally, my friend. Oh, Celebrimbor, your hubris. But I'm not gonna blame you that for that. I'm not gonna blame you for that. That's Sauron. You're a twisted mf -er, man, but you're damn good. Whew, and how much magic did that take out of you? Not the slow walk. That's the true villain walk when it's slow-mo with the smirk. Dang, it's a wrap, Oregonian, it's a wrap. Say what you want about orcs, they be ugly, they breath be stankin', but they are hard workers. You fool, Eddar, you fool. Y'all have any, like, magic shields? Won't matter, Sauron will take, away, take them down anyway. Peace out, Oregonian. Oh, just like that, pretty, pretty elven city falls. Ooh, it's starting to get spicy, guys. We're getting close to the end of the season. And yes, it is, um, it's it's definitely heating up 
for those who uh, may have been waiting for things to heat up, here we go. But as I've said in multiple episodes, I actually greatly enjoy the buildup. I really like how we've been putting all these bricks in place to show how we get to this point, how we're gonna get to the inevitable clash that's going to go on for some time. I mean, again, as a book reader, I already know that this isn't necessarily Sauron's victory that's about to happen, but he gets pretty darn close in this one, right? Like to where we get before the 2000, 2000? Not quite, whatever. It's something like around the 2000 years between when the ring goes missing to when we get to the events of Lord of the Rings, the books, uh, it's, it's going to be a very messy for Middle Earth, right? This is definitely not gonna be a pretty time. And it's just, like I said, just so fascinating to watch the mind games and the lengths that Sauron goes to. And as I said, it's so frustrating because Sauron's such a good villain in the sense of, you know, in the books, I feel like they talk, they don't talk as much about Sauron on, on, and like his objective and the amount of work he put into this subjugation plan. It's kind of more that he's just as objective to destroy in those books, right? It really is more about the ring and the ring, the ring's effect on Frodo and the ripple effect of what the ring means for all the people who are involved in Frodo getting to, you know, Mount Doom. But in this particular series, I like that they're fleshing Sauron out, you know, really giving us an idea of who he is and how manipulative and how smart and how devoted he is to this cause. And again, of course, because, well, at least for me anyways, I'm someone who, you know, I'm on the side of Middle Earth. I'm not ever going to be for world domination, you know what I'm saying? But if you try to look at it from Sauron's point of view, in his mind, this is the way. We saw it way back in episode one, when he was his old bodied self, when he was explaining to the orcs, you know, his vision is that this is what Middle Earth needs. They need one ruler. They need free will taken out of the, the equation. They need to just all follow him and then there'll be peace. There'll be harmony. Everything will be the way it's supposed to be. And he'll be running things because he knows best. You know, that's kind of the narcissist part there. But still, he feels like this is how Middle Earth finally has peace. No more infighting. No more divisions between races. No more hierarchies. It's all going to be one big flat system where he's at the top and everybody else is beneath him and that's all that matters and they don't have to worry about thinking for themselves or doing for themselves he'll take care of that they just need to subjugate and this is the way to make it happen and i mean i feel like what would be good and i don't know if we're going to get it this season probably not but what would be really nice with a villain like him is to get an idea of like what led him to getting to this place of feeling like he has to do this right? Because a lot of times when you hear about people who become megalomaniacs like this and they really, really want to like take over everything, a lot of times it's because they've seen a lot of death or they've seen a lot of unnecessary, you know, suffering and pain and war. And they've tried reasoning with people or reasoning with different groups and realizing that it's just one hard head after another. And that's when they start to think, you know what, the problem is that you all think for yourselves, right? Like, is that maybe what happened with Sauron, right? Is there maybe a situation where he saw so much turmoil that he thought this was the answer? Or is this really just purely a power grab? Is it really just about him thinking, no, nope, I just really want to be the most powerful guy ever? Because I just don't think, again, this is just human thinking, I suppose, that it can't be that simplistic. But we know so little about Sauron's origins. So anyways, still seeing though that this is such a vision for Sauron, that he's thought this through. Like, I love that this series is really showing us that he has thought this through. This is a plan. This is a vision. This is not some half-hearted attempt or half-hearted grab at power. He really wants this and he's been plotting and planning and in his mind, basically accounting for every possible loose end. Now we know, of course, when they get down the line, he did not account for the little old hobbits, but for the most part, he thought he had everybody in check and seeing the way that he's playing the, the elves, but particularly Celebrimbor and even the way he already has Durin senior in the palm of his hand it's just like he's so determined like he's seeing the steps finally come into place and he's all the more determined now because of what happened in episode one with you know losing his first body right and now that he realizes okay this is not gonna be the the cakewalk i kind of thought it was gonna be he's more tenacious than ever he's not letting any of these small hiccups divert him and that's what happens when you really have a vision and like a purpose and you're really determined to do it so anyways as i said if sauron wasn't evil you gotta be impressed right you really do have to be impressed with the tenacity but yes um we see what's going on there at eragion he has got everybody who could potentially talk sense into calabrimbor out of the way he now is the only voice in calabrimbor's head we see that calabrimbor was having issues remembering things and 
I do think some of that is the effect of the magic that Sauron has around him constantly to keep him somewhat controlled. But also I just think that he's absolutely right too, that when somebody is super focused on something, if you've ever met people who are really, really like obsessed with a particular thing, like whether it's some form of craftsmanship or, you know, whatever it is that they do, they do get into a zone. And when they get into that zone, absolutely everything else stops mattering. You know what I'm saying? Like people will go days without sleep and food because they're so focused on getting to solutions. So I do think that that's a little bit of what's going on with Celebrimbor, but I do also think that Sauron is also making sure that he's staying a little bit disoriented so that he doesn't actually start to think about how mad this all is. And we see that, of course, the people around him are picking up on that, but that's why Sauron got rid of them. And now he basically has, he basically has uh, Celebrimbor working without rest getting these rings done because he knows, right? <laughs> Sauron knows he does not have all the time in the world. He knows that once this siege on Eregion is done, he's only going to have so much time to get those rings to men. So again, everything's about the clock for Sauron and, you know, making sure he gets as much of his plan into action before anyone wakes up and can potentially do the ripple effect of stopping him. So that's where we're at. Poor Regian is done. I just feel bad for the poor elves because, yeah, thanks to Sauron, like there's a lot of innocent people that are going to die in that city because... They just have no other option. I mean, a lot of those elves probably would submit if it's between that and their lives, but they're not even going to be given the chance. But yes, uh, other than that, we had a little bit of Adar and uh, Galadriel. They were kind of a smaller part of the episode, but we see that Adar basically thought he was playing Galadriel, uh, basically trying to get information out of her, trying to validate his suspicions that Halbron was in fact Sauron, which I don't think he really figured out until later. Like he's trying to act like he knew that all along, but he really didn't under he really wasn't picking up on that until much later. But anyways, he basically said to her, look, we could potentially work together because both of us want Sauron gone. Like that's the one thing that we do have in common. And we see that, you know, basically after some time, Galadriel's like, okay, I'll give him something or at least try to work with him. Because at that point, I think she realized either way, we're in a desperate situation that's not going to benefit either of us. So I'll give you some information in exchange for potentially stopping this greater evil and then we'll deal with everything else later. But that's where Adar basically kind of called her out and was like, okay, so let's say we do, you know, work with the elves here to get rid of Sauron. Then what happens to us, right? What happens to the orcs? What happens to the rest of us? And of course she can't answer that because she knows, right? Elves absolutely despise orcs. There's no way they're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, go back to Mordor and hang out. No, right? They're gonna be like, Let's destroy them. Let's, you know, like exactly. I think what he said is exactly what would have happened. They would have taken down Sauron and whatever he's got set up there. And then they would have immediately turned on the orcs. So yeah, Adar's like, I don't trust y'all. And quite frankly, it works to my advantage to lose for an elven city to fall. Because then that means one less group of people that could come after me and my, my children. Right. So of course, once he, you know, he says that, and of course in his mind, he's like, yeah, we'll take out Sauron. We'll take out Oregion. We'll just, you know, two birds, one stone. And then finally we see that Galadriel clicks in and she's like, yo, that's what he wants. Like, how does that not benefit Sauron? She's like, he didn't have an army to, to siege Oregion. He needed the orcs. That was his original plan. Y'all took him out. He came back, convinced you to go exactly what he wanted to do, which is what I said many episodes ago. So she clicked into it and she tried to tell Adar. She's like, bro, Think about it. How is this not benefiting Sauron? Like, this is what he wanted. He literally planned for this. This is what he wants you to think so that you'll attack the city with your army, aka his army. What do you think is going to happen? So she does try to appeal to his sense, but of course, Ados Pride won't let him believe that he's been played by Sauron twice. So he says, no, we're going ahead and we're attacking the city no matter what. And so unfortunately, yeah, once again, what are Sauron's, uh, you know, many, many dominoes falling into place yet again. So, so I support Galadriel. I feel bad for her to know that she's got to sit back and quite literally listen as her, her kinfolk are going to be going through it over the next little while here and basically helpless to do anything about it. And then we didn't have really anything with the elves. No, we didn't. We just had a little bit, like a literally so little of um, Arondir. Um, he is pursuing the elves, or sorry, pursuing the orcs. It looks like he's trying to follow where they've gone, but he's alone. So how much damage he can do by himself is pretty low, but we do know he's on a mission to get to Adar. He might manage to take him out, but at this point, it's going to be such a futile victory in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, anyways, all we saw of him was literally like two minutes. And the rest of the episode was pretty much, oh, we had a little bit of Nori. Sorry, Nori and the Stewards. And we see that the stores are still keeping Nori and uh, Poppy there in their refuge, I guess you could say. And Nori is basically like, well, what if we all leave? Like when one way to get around this potentially is that we, we move and 
we hear um, the guns say, no, like this is our home. And she gives the stories of why this is more than just where they live. It's actually their home. Very, you know, real world talk about why certain people who live in areas that are maybe not the safest or not, not necessarily the best choice, why they don't leave is because there's history, there's sentimental reasons why they stay there. And so, yeah, and I understand like with Nori, you know, her people have always been nomadic. So for her, she doesn't really have so much of that attachment to places per se, right? For her people, for the Harfoots, home is their people, home is their tribe. Whereas with these, this group of hobbits, their, where they live has a real attachment, you know, on top of the fact that they of course, they have their community there too. So anyways, really cute moment of, you know, what home means for different people. And basically Nori said like, look, I don't feel good about this though. Like if me and Poppy stay, we're going to be bringing danger to you and you didn't ask for that. So maybe I have to be the one to fix it. I'll go turn myself in. And then at least that way, there's a chance for your people to be left alone, right? So um, she's saying all this while we see Poppy is quite literally falling in love right now with Mary Merrimack. Yeah, I'm not going to call him nobody. That's mean. But anyways, yes, her and, and uh, Merrimack are getting quite close. But thankfully, Poppy also understands that there is a bigger mission at hand here. And even though she's got a little crushy crush, she can always come back to that, you know, should she survive. So it looks like they've made the, the decision to go and face the Dark Wizard to save the village. And I, you know, I got to give them props for that because that is a very selfless decision. And then over on the wizard side of things, we see that him and Tom Bombadil are talking and we see that it looks like the wizard has the ability to see a bit into the future. So he did see that Nori was in some form of danger and he wants to find her. But Tom basically tells him, look, you need to finish up your training. Like you need to figure out how to control your magic and do it quickly. Otherwise you are not going to be in a position not only to help them, but to face off either Sauron or the Dark Wizard, both of which you are fated to go up against. So he's like, you're going to have to make a choice right now, bro. You're either going to have to save yourself, so to speak, to save the many or you can sacrifice everything for the one and then in the end really not save her because all of Middle-earth will be in peril anyway, <laughs> right? So he basically is like, it is your choice. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but he took him to a place where he said he would find his staff, aka have his vision vision quest, I would say, to figure out what he needs to do to finally center himself enough to use magic properly. And then hopefully from there, he'll be able to go and, and get Nori and save her and actually face off against this dark wizard. That's what I'm predicting anyways. But yeah, just some good life lessons about the importance of mastering ourselves before we think we can save other people. You know, the old uh, airplane, put the mask on yourself first situ situation. So that's what we had with them. And then outside of that, we had, um, whatchamacallit, Durin, Durin and the Dwarves. We see that Durin Sr. has lost his mind. The ring is completely taken over his mind and he's become, it's just exacerbated the greed that he already had. He's got all the different, you know, dwarves of the different nations bringing him gold, which I said, what are you going to do with all that, bro? Like you don't even spend your money. You don't, you never leave the mountain. What is this for? You're basically a dragon hoarding gold for nothing. But anyways, he's just completely obsessed with money and profit. And we see that uh, he stopped the mithril shippings to the elves because he wants more, right? He's just trying to drive up a bargain. And so when Sauron arrives and asks for more mithril in, in exchange for timber, he says no. And of course, at first Sauron's a bit angry, but then I guess he used his magic to sense the fact that the rings were at play here. So he was like, yeah, okay, cool, I'll leave. But we see that somehow, some way, he stole some mithril on his way out anyway. So anyhow, his he still realized that even though he got a no from Durin, that his ultimate goal, which is having complete control over the dwarves, has already happened, right? Durin is the, his test that the dwarven rings are working exactly the way he wanted them to. And we see that Durin at that point recognized, Durin Jr. recognized that his father is in fact completely under the influence of the ring and tried to get him to see that. But of course, we all know that these rings do not let their wearers have any peace. So it just didn't go well. And then when Durin told Disa, Disa was like, as, it, as usual, Women getting it done. But she said, okay, well, if your daddy ain't listening to sense, then we're just going to have to get him overthrown. Like, there's no other way we can do it. Like, he can't do nothing without the power of the people. So she's like, we will get the entire dwarven kingdom to lay at the base of this mountain if that's what it takes to stop him from mining. And then when they realize he's lost his mind, they'll overthrow him. And then you'll be the king and you have sense. So I do think something along those lines will probably end up happening. But as I said, the call of the ring 
is stronger than I think either of them realize. So we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, that's what's going down in the mind right now. A little bit of a civil war happening. So there's no peace to be had anywhere at the moment. A lot of upheaval, a lot of discord, but this is exactly what Sauron wants, right? The more disrupted and distracted everyone is, the less time they have to get together and take him out. So yeah, another good episode. As I said, I'm really loving the way they're building up this this conflict, they're building up this plan and we're start starting to see part of it finally executed in Eregion, which I think is going to be some pretty sad stuff over the next couple episodes, but I'm enjoying the ride. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.